So if architecture is to be an expression of our humanity and our time, our 21st century buildings will require a level of innovation and technological savvy that as an industry we're not yet achieving. This 21st century building is complex, interconnected, and social to accommodate our evolving human networks. It's flexible to respond to our fast-changing world, and it must be sustainable beyond traditional metrics. But the problem is that, for the most part, the supply chain in our industry hasn't changed in over 50 years. We're trying to use 20th century delivery methods to deliver 21st century buildings, and it's not working out so well. Despite many attempts to change this and solve this, mostly through contracts, our industry remains fundamentally still adversarial. This is not the environment which will inspire the innovation required to deliver our 21st century buildings. But at LMN, we think there's a way. And it involves creative people, it involves our tools, and it involves getting our hands dirty and making things. So with this in mind, several years ago, we started a research and development group that we call Tech Studio. It's an evolving group of individuals with technological curiosities that you wouldn't normally see in an architecture firm. Their goal is to research, develop, and deploy emerging technologies to, to our design work in the studio. We've built our own interaction hardware to allow designers to interact with their generative models in new ways. We've built interfaces that link our physical models to our digital simulation tools and allow for real-time feedback while manipulating the model. And we've built our own CNC tools to begin exploring the role and potential of larger-scale digital fabrication to our project work. We've had a lot of fun with all, all this research over the years, but we've always known that there would be great opportunities in applying this kind of thinking to, to the realities of our design work and to our profession. So today I want to share with you a few examples of how Tech Studio is transforming our practice. So in 2009, at the depth of the recession, our industry was in a really desperate state. Architects everywhere were willing to do a lot more for less, and we were no exception. We just won a huge project to redesign the civic core of Cleveland, an incredibly pr prominent site, and this client had very high design aspirations. But we had a very tight schedule and an even tighter budget. We had only three and a half months to develop a facade concept and bring it all the way through to fabrication information, all the way just to the, to the uh, design build team. That's just a quarter of the time that we would normally want to do something like this in. So at the time, we'd been working on ways of interacting with our generative design models and link them to our simulation tools so we could rapid, rapidly iterate through many options and come to uh, an optimized uh, solution. The problem was that at the time, there was no quick way to get this geometry and data quickly into Revit, which was our collaboration platform. So we set out and built a plugin to unite this process. That's right, we the architects had actually become software developers to solve our problems. And it enabled a few amazing things. First, we were able to almost instantaneously give each team member the information that they needed to validate the design. Things as simple as quantity takeoffs enabled real-time pricing by our contractor. We automated the process of making drawing sheets here to uh, itemize multi-panel assemblies for our concrete fabricator, allowing them, uh, saving them hours of time every time we, we decided to re work through this, this iteration. And the same model was pushed forward uh, to develop the surface geometry of the concrete panels. This geometry quickly became so complex that we couldn't actually render the full building in our computers, so we set out to study it in physical form and started casting our own. These models were really critical in many ways. Uh, they allowed a very high level of detail resolution, and they actually allowed us to realize material savings on the building. But mostly, this method of working gener generated a huge amount of trust between us and our builders. As a result, our digital models were used to directly fabricate the final building components, completely eliminating the time-consuming shop drawing review process. So this project set a new standard for us at LMN. It enabled team-wide collaboration at a really unprecedented pace. We engaged in a meaningful dialogue with our builders, which led to a better design. But ultimately, it allowed us to build something we could have never built before. 
To us, this project completely redefined the role of technology in architecture. We weren't just using it to make something look interesting. We were able to use it and leverage it all the way through the delivery process. So as we emerged from the recession, it had become clear that our industry had fundamentally changed, and so did we. Our clients continued to expect more for less, and one of the best examples was a project that we began in 2013 for the University of Iowa. Their arts campus had been decimated by a flood of the Mississippi, and they needed a new music school. On a very complex uh, site in the heart of Iowa City is a very complicated building type. But the problem was, the agency paying the bills was FEMA, and FEMA required an outdated means of procuring the work, essentially requiring that the lowest bid would win every single one of 13 prime contracts. Now, traditionally, this is when architects get really conservative. So clearly, this is not a recipe for innovation. Now, there are a lot of things about this project that I would love to talk about today, but I'm going to want to talk specifically about the ceiling system that we developed for the main concert hall. The design of this space involved the, the input of 15 specialty consultants, all of whom would be critical in the project's success. So we set out and built a very robust parametric model that allowed their data to drive the geometry of this system. The model gave us the capacity to coordinate a huge amount of data, resol resolve the conflicts, and simulate the acoustic performance of this system, all the while optimizing the form as the variables evolved in the design process. But the problem remained, how would we make this thing? So at the time, we were really interested in, in a material called composite aluminum panel. This is the stuff that's usually reserved for making gas stations. Needless to say, this was a completely new application for this material type, which meant lots of uncertainty about how it would perform. And uh, the beauty of the material, though, is how easily it can be manipulated to do some really interesting things. But without construction input on the team, we had to set out and prove it ourselves. So we enlisted the help of our CNC router and got to work making prototypes. And this is where we learned a really valuable lesson. And that is, if you can walk into a conference room full of skeptics and show them this thing that you built on the weekend, nobody can tell you that it can't be done. Suddenly, this idea went from crazy to completely feasible. The, the prototypes were really critical in other ways. They were allowing us to prove out our details, prove out our documentation, in which we could show the ease of assembly. But to make it truly biddable at an affordable cost, we needed to attract fabricators who would be savvy enough to fabricate directly from our data. So in an effort to send a smoke signal up over the contract divide, we published the data to fabricate every single panel in our drawing set. And it worked. The winning bidder contacted us immediately upon winning the contract, got our digital model, and fabricated mock-ups and the final system. Here it is just yesterday. The scaffolding's coming down today. So what did we learn? Well, that creative thinking with some cheap materials can go a long way when you can self-prototype. The direct-to-fabrication model is still possible, even in the most stringent of delivery methods. And once again, our technology is allowing us to overcome some of the biggest challenges of our work. What we've seen so far is the big gains in the back end of projects, where the architect and LMN is becoming absorbed into the building and the making of the project. But we believe that there are some huge gains to be made on the front end of projects as well. Earlier this year, we began work on a new bridge for the Seattle Department of Transportation. Now, DOTs are normally very bureaucratic institutions, and these infrastructure projects really require a layering of public approvals. Both of these can be very big impediments to progressive design and delivery. Not to mention the fact that this is the kind of structure that they usually build for pedestrians. But we believe that architects are the missing ingredient to this problem, because we can minimize their risk by enabling the consideration of multiple variables simultaneously, and we can deliver this all with high quality design at a very affordable cost. Our client, KPFF engineers, believe that too, so they hired us to, to lead the initial coordination and public process for this new bridge. Initially, there were huge variables at play. We didn't even know where exactly the bridge would, would go. So we set out again and built a very robust parametric model that allowed us to study every single permutation of that. So this is where technology is totally transforming the way that we're working on projects in these early phases. In the old days, an engineer would have only been able to study two to three options because the variables are so complicated. But today, we can effectively allow them to study every single configuration possible. 
This same model is being pushed forward as the basics of the project's feasibility and cost model. And then into the design phase, the same model is becoming the central point of coordination for the entire design team, allowing us the, the chance to refine the structural geometry uh, as well as uh, all the geometric rationalization to that model. And once again, bringing us direct to fabrication, this time for small-scale prototypes, which are becoming absolutely critical in the public approval of these projects. So as a result of all this work, the bridge uh, just received full, full public funding just last month and will be going out to bid in 2016. But we're finding that our pro private clients are, are really benefiting from these ways of working as well. They're coming to us with increasingly complicated projects with multiple layers of negotiations and approvals required. Most recently, for what will be the tallest building west of Chicago, only two blocks from our studio in Seattle. Our models are becoming the basis of their initial land negotiations. They're the key in developing the, in the base, basic financial models, which are proving the viability of these projects. As in the public work, these same models are becoming key to the public approvals of the project, allowing us to optimize the building form and location and mix for any given site. Here you see an analysis algorithm studying the views of the building and how it might impact those of the views of the buildings around it. We're even automating conceptual building of the, pro, the pr conceptual programming for this building. So when we put all this data together, we're providing a value to the owner that far exceeds anything that we could have done in the past. The architects are now fundamentally informing the financial models of these projects. So we in the design and construction industry must be the catalysts for positive change and development in our cities. And we believe that the smart and agile use of technology is the only path to getting there. So if technology is allowing us to build better, faster, and more efficiently, why isn't everybody using it in these ways? At LMN, we believe that the key to our success is the key to our, is the firm, I'm sorry, say it again. We believe that the key to our success is, depends on the success of our industry as a whole. So we're committed to making this way of working a new paradigm which means we need to quickly disseminate all of our findings amongst our studio and to the profession beyond, and we're doing it. Since we started Tech Studio, we've been sharing both our research and our software developments for free online to anybody who wants it. Finally, for us to make good on our 21st century promise, I believe we must be committed to cross-industry collaboration. Our biggest gains will be made from the insight from people in this room. Thank you.